Hello, welcome to the Roseville Parks and Recreation Adult Softball Online Managers Meeting. This 15-minute video is designed to provide you with all the necessary league information for the summer 2017 season to ensure that your team gets the most out of the season here at Roseville. First, we want to thank you for choosing to play your summer softball here with the City of Roseville. We understand that you have many softball options throughout the metro area, and we appreciate that you have chosen to play with us. We have more than 140 teams spread over six nights of play and are excited with all that we have to offer. The goal of our leagues are to provide a safe, well-organized, sportsmanly, fun, and fair atmosphere to all participants of all backgrounds and skill level. All policies and procedures here in this league are made with that goal in mind. First off, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Lake Johnson and I am the Recreation Supervisor in charge of softball here at Roseville. I can be reached by either email or phone with any questions or concerns that you may have. My primary method of communication with managers will be by email. If you do not use email, please let me know as soon as possible so that I know that I need to contact you by phone or other means if any changes are made. The league website is cityofroseville.com slash softball, and your softball schedules will also be linked on that site or can be visited directly at teamsideline.com slash RPR. All league schedules will be posted by Friday, April 14th. Any schedule changes that are made will be posted on the league page. Additionally, if any changes are made, managers will be emailed to inform you of that change. In addition, as you can see, the league pages do indicate updated standings and results for each game. We do encourage managers to check back often to let us know if there were any scores entered incorrectly so that we can make sure that we keep accurate tabs on the league. Games are scheduled to begin on Friday, April 21st and each subsequent day. For example, Sunday games begin on April 23rd, Monday games on April 24th, and so on. Each league will have a playoff for the top eight teams. Brackets will be posted on the league page following the final game of the season. Rosters. Managers will be emailed a blank roster form, but can also find it on the league schedule page or on our softball league page. All teams are required to provide a roster prior to their first game. Rosters must include all players that you intend on using on your team at any point during the season. Substitute players will be allowed during the regular season, but only rostered players may be used in playoffs. When selecting substitutions, please consider the skill level of your league and not bring in quote-unquote ringer players who may make the balance of the league unfair. Teams who do not submit a roster will in fact forfeit a game if they are protested against. Inclement weather. If games are in question, please contact our weather website that can be found on the league page or schedule page or call the weather hotline by 4.30 p.m. Play or no play decisions will be based on the status of the fields as of 4.15 p.m., not based upon any forecasted conditions or projections. There have been several situations in the past in which forecasts have been wrong, in which 100% rain was projected, but skies indeed cleared up and games were able to be played. If conditions prior to 4.30 dictate that the field will be unplayable, we will make every effort to update the weather website as early as possible to let you know if games will be canceled for the evening. Should conditions change after 4.30, the umpires on site will make the final player no play decision based on the conditions of their field. In the event of after hour cancellations, we will make every attempt to update the weather hotline but cannot do so until we receive confirmation that all fields have been canceled for the night. Should rain occur, up to two weeks of rainouts will be scheduled. Game time and forfeits. Please remember that game time is the time listed on your schedule. Teams should be prepared and be ready to play at that time. A 10 minute grace period will be allowed for six o'clock games, but that 10 minutes will be removed from your total time. 
so teams should try every effort to be ready to play by 6 p.m. A five-minute grace period will also be allowed for all other game times, but remember that five minutes will be deducted from your total playing time. Once a team has eight players present, they must begin and cannot wait for that ninth or tenth player to arrive. Games will be seven innings long, with no new inning set to begin 55 minutes from the scheduled start time. Please remember, if you must forfeit your game, please contact your opponent as well as our office by phone as soon as possible. Nobody likes to show up for a game and not have another team to play, and we encourage every team to make every effort to field a team each week, so teams can continue to receive the same number of games throughout the season. If your team is looking for any additional players or subs, please contact me directly and I can provide you with a list of free agent players looking to join a team. Game balls and scorebooks. Game balls for the entire season will be distributed at your first game. Managers will be given a package of softballs containing one game ball per home game. Managers must bring a ball for each of their home games. If a home team fails to provide a new game ball, they will begin that game behind 3-0. to zero. Visiting teams should also be prepared to provide one used ball in the event that the primary game ball is hit out of play. For playoff games, umpires will have game balls ready at the field. Teams will also be provided a scorebook at their first game. More information will be provided about that during later slides. Please remember, in accordance with the statewide U-Triple-SA standards, all non-wood bats must have the new U-Triple-SA stamp on them. The old text U-Triple-SA logo will not be accepted. Only the new stamp that is permanently stamped on the bat will be accepted. Bats must also, also be unaltered and comply with U-Triple-SA rule number two standards. Umpires will be instructed to check all bats prior to the first game of the season. Lineups and keeping score. Teams will be provided a scorebook prior to their first game. Each team is expected to keep book for each game. At the conclusion of each half inning, please confer with the umpire and the other scorekeeper to ensure that all three parties have the same score. In the event of a discrepancy, if it is caught at the end of a half inning, it should be easy to compare books to correctly assess the correct score. However, if errors are allowed to persist, it is often very difficult to go back two, three, or four innings to correct them, so please be certain to check with the umpire and the opposing scorekeeper at the end of each half inning. Conduct and Sportsmanship The primary focus of all Roosevelt Leagues is on fun. Teams are expected to utilize good sportsmanship at all times towards their opponents, the umpires, and your own teammates. As managers, please prevent your team from getting into trash talking with other teams or arguing with the umpire. Remember, you are the leader out there, so please remember that the focus of these games should be on fun and recreational. All umpires officiating in the City of Roseville are expected to be U-Triple-SA certified. Additionally, the City has implemented a Roseville-only umpires meeting to discuss local rules and its expectations for their umpires. Teams may reasonably expect umpires to be on time, behave professionally, to hustle, and to briefly discuss a call with a manager if he or she approaches in a respectful manner after time has been granted. Please note that it is unreasonable of teams to expect umpires to get every call correct, to know every single rule of the large U-Triple-SA rulebook inside and out, to tolerate frequent complaints and or verbal abuse, to tolerate comments about an umpire's integrity or that are personal in nature, such as, are they paying you today or you're terrible. And it is unreasonable to expect an umpire to tolerate complaints about balls and strikes. Overall, judgment calls are not open to dispute. Teams must learn to live with the fact that umpires will make calls that they will not agree with and they must move on with the game. Dealing with umpires. When dealing with an umpire, please keep the following items in mind. 
First, only team managers or the player involved may discuss a call with an umpire, and only after time is granted by the umpire. Discussions must be respectful. No shouting or gesturing of, or profanity will be tolerated. After the umpire has given his or her explanation, the manager must return to his position or the dugout immediately. Please note, rule interpretations may be formally protested in accordance with the Roseville Parks and Recreation League rules as found in the rulebook, but judgment calls are indeed final and not open for protest. The following actions will result in warning or immediate ejection if observed by an umpire, so please prevent players on your team from engaging in any of the following actions. Continuous complaints about judgment calls. Any player besides the manager leaving their position to argue a call. Shouting at an umpire. Use of profanity. Use of personal statements towards an umpire. Threats or taunting any other player, spectator, or umpire, or continuing a behavior after already receiving a warning. Per league rules, any player ejected from a game will serve a one-game suspension or possibly more, depending upon the severity of the situation. Umpire Evaluations Roseville Leagues are continuously looking to improve our umpire evaluations program. That being said, managers will be sent an umpire evaluation on one or two dates throughout the season. The evaluations will be asking you to evaluate one of the umpires during your games. Please evaluate the umpire based on their professionalism, hustle, rule knowledge, and game management. Please do not base your evaluation upon the outcome of the game or whether or not you felt judgment calls were ruled for or against your favor. If you have an exceptionally good or bad experience with an umpire, feel free to fill out the umpire's evaluation form, which is located on the league website. Park Rules Please remind your teams to clean out your dugout and dugout areas before you leave for the night. Please ensure that no bottles or other items are left behind in your dugouts. Additionally, please be respectful of the neighbors and the pedestrians who walk through these parks. Make sure that your team members are not using profanity or doing anything else that may make residents or community members feel uncomfortable. Finally, please note that city ordinance does prohibit the use of alcohol and tobacco in Roseville City Parks. As many returning teams are aware, in the fall of 2015, the Capital Region Watershed District installed a cistern underneath the Beedale Villa field. This was installed to help reduce flooding in the area and reduce the runoff to Lake McCarran's, which was causing pollution. I am happy to report that the new sod has been installed along the right outfield line, which concludes the final step of the two-year project. Thank you to all returning teams for your patience and understanding during the construction process. League playing rules. Although there has been multiple Roseville revisions to the U-Triple-S-A rulebook, here's a few we would like to highlight. First, the home run limits. The men's C division has a maximum of four home runs and plays with the plus one rule, which was implemented in 2016. Please note, only the C division will use this plus one rule. Men's D divisions has two home runs. Correct C has two home runs. Correct D allows no home runs, with the exception to the short field at Central Park Lexington Northwest. Teams are allowed to have one home run at that field. Please note, any home run beyond the limit will be only one out, which differs from the U-Triple-S-A rule. All leagues will use the three ball and two strike count with no courtesy foul. This means that if a player has one strike against them and hits a foul ball, they will be out. 
players are not permitted to dig in to the batter's box by kicking dirt around or out of the way as they come up to the box. However, players may kick dirt around to even out the spot that they are batting in, essentially filling in holes that were made but may not dig into the batter's box. No metal spikes will be permitted in our leagues, and courtesy runner will be limited to one courtesy runner per inning. The courtesy runner will be the last person to be put out. Double play situations. In an effort to prevent injury, Roseville has clarified the double play rule. All runners must either slide legally or attempt to get out of the way of the fielder turning to complete the double play. For a slide to be legal, players must remain on the ground and slide directly toward the base. The image that is being shown on this, this slide would be considered legal in Major League Baseball, but considered illegal in our league, as the runner is not going directly toward the base and has his right leg elevated and not on the ground. This would be ruled an out for both the runner sliding and the runner at first base, granting the double play regardless of where the shortstop's throw ended up. Additionally, we have implemented a prohibition on hitting the ball back towards the pitcher intentionally in an effort to intimidate the pitcher. This can also be referred to as lighting up or buzzing the pitcher. If an umpire is confident that a team is intentionally hitting the ball at the pitcher, they are instructed to warn and then eject the offender. This is a dangerous situation that can lead to severe injury and even death. Please do not allow members on your team to intentionally hit the ball back up the middle in an effort to intimidate the pitcher. New Rules and Reminders Please note the new rule regarding the use of radios before, during, and after game times. Radios are no longer permitted on team benches during official game times. Teams may play appropriate music during warm-ups only. Please also avoid blasting or blaring music that may have profanity in it or be inappropriate. Please take the time to review all local league rules and share with all players. Reminder, any rule not listed in our local rules will follow the U-Triple-S-A rulebook, which can be found online through the link provided. Similar to last year, we also hope to have an evening field supervisor available during league nights to monitor fields, provide extra first aid supplies when needed, and answer many, any questions that you may have. League Champions Champions at the conclusion of the season, each regular season and playoff champion will receive a championship t-shirt and their choice of a trophy or restaurant gift card. I will be contacting each manager who is entitled to prizes following the conclusion of the season to obtain their sizes and determine which award they would like. Wrapping up, please remember that we want this league to be well organized and safe with an eff emphasis on sportsmanship. Managers, I ask you to please be the leaders on this and encourage your teams to follow suit. Keep these games in perspective. Yes, competition is important, but we want all participants to be safe and have fun above all else. Please do not hesitate to contact me with any questions or concerns throughout the entirety of the season. For those managers participating in CORAC divisions as well, we do have a few additional slides available to clarify some of the CORAC rule modifications that we have in place. Finally, I thank you once again for choosing Roseville for your summer softball league. I wish everyone a safe and fun season. Best of luck and I hope to see many of you out on the fields. Thank you.